I just came back from Alabama. I talked to one woman. She's on her last embryo transfer. It was scheduled for tomorrow. Yeah. And now she has to start all over. Is that acceptable yeah. to you? Well, not really. No, I want everybody, if they want kids, if they can't have it, uh, and that's the only way they can have it, I want to be able to use that. So is this the wrong move by the Alabama Supreme, Supreme Court? Court. That panicky lawmaker you just witnessed is Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville from Alabama. And I say panicky, it is subtle because the Supreme Court in his state carried out a theology ridden ruling that effectively banned in vitro fertilization because the court thinks an embryo in a petri dish is the same thing as a viable baby outside the womb. The court said embryos, whether they're within or out of a uterus, are children and would be protected under Alabama's wrongful death of a minor act. The court, in its majority opinion, nodded to a 2018 amendment to the Alabama Constitution, which provides protections for the rights of the unborn child, including the right to life. Now, Republicans have already suffered some pretty significant political consequences following the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the abortion rights that came along with the previous ruling in 1973. And the latest news out of Alabama during a general election year is a serious political vulnerability. Tuberville might look and you know sound like a moron, but even he knows the GOP is staring down more backlash as red states continue their assault on reproductive rights, including for women who want to have children, have difficulty doing so, and are willing to undergo time consuming and costly treatments to make it happen. And I'm not the only one with this take. Take a look at conservative Sean Hannity airing his worries on Fox News just last night. Stephen, let me follow up on that because I would argue 2022, the reason the big quote wave didn't happen, I would argue in large part it had to do with abortion. If you mentioned Pennsylvania, you had a top of the ticket Democrat, Doug Mastriano, nice guy, but he didn't even have exceptions for rape incest of the mother's life. He lost by what, 15, 16 points. And I think this is a cautionary tale for every Republican. You see the reaction of the left in this country on the issue of the of IVF in vitro fertilization, the Alabama court decision, and and clearly Republicans better message that in New York District Three, almost every ad was about abortion. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need one percent of our audience to be paid members, and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Great job with that panel, Hannity, real lookers you've got there. And look, even Voldemort himself is aware of the reality of the political liability of basically attacking women's reproductive rights. Let's watch him cry about it on Fox. Absolutely, it hurt the Republican Party in the midterms to be betrayed as the party that doesn't even support exceptions for cases of rape, incest, and the life of the mother. It is also true that Democrats have mastered the art form of hammering that message to a specific demographic of female voters aggressively, relentlessly, with hundreds of millions of dollars in spend, and then sending workers, union workers, to their house, sending teachers' unions to their house, sending campuses to their house to collect that mail-in ballot. And it's the combination of that hyper-focused messaging on specific issues to specific subsets of voters with the ballot harvesting operation that made them so effective in 2022. Oh my God, are Democrats engaging in politics? Ah, uh, Yes, Democrats, obviously they may need to make it harder to vote. And they should totally stop informing women about the deeply unpopular politics and policies Republicans support. This guy is just totally delusional. And for our audio audience, that was Stephen Miller. It wasn't literally Voldemort, although he kind of looks like him. Following Alabama's Supreme Court decision, Donald Trump released a statement distancing himself from the terrible policies that were made possible by the three conservative justices he nominated to the United States Supreme Court, who of course overturned abortion rights through the reversal of Roe, which led the way for state legislators, by the way, to do the harm that we're seeing in Alabama. 
He said that I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, healthy American families. We want to make it easier for mothers and fathers to have babies, not harder. And look, this might be the one time I genuinely trust what Trump is saying. I mean, he loves babies so much that he had many of them with three different women. Now, will Republicans protect women's rights to in vitro fertilization treatments? To find out, let's get back to Tuberville and what he claims is happening in his state of Alabama. The state's getting ready to pass a law in Alabama that it's going to be okay. They're going to pass it, that it's, that it's, uh, that it's going to be positive. So why? But still, there are women that are left in the balance. I just came back from Alabama. I talked to one woman. She's on her last embryo transfer. It was scheduled for tomorrow. Yeah. And now she has to start all over. Is that acceptable yeah. to you? Well, not really. No, I want everybody, if they want kids, if they can't have it, uh, and that's the only way they can have it, I want to be able to use that. So is that this the wrong move by the Alabama Supreme, Supreme Court? Court. Yes. And that's the reason the state legislature is going to go back and pass a law where it's, it's legal. So to be clear, you believe it's the wrong move? Wrong move by the Supreme Court, yes. yes. It's true that Alabama's legislature is looking to pass a bill that would protect IVF treatments for women. But there are major politically motivated caveats in how they want to carry it out, which we will dive into in just a moment. But first, let's actually get into the language of their proposals. Introduced by Republican State Senator Tim Melson, Senate Bill 159 would provide civil and criminal immunity to persons providing goods and services related to in vitro fertilization except acts of omission that are intentional and not arising from or related to IVF services. Hours after the Senate bill's introduction, the House in Alabama introduced its own bill aiming to safeguard IVF providers. Sponsored by Republican Terry Collins, House Bill 237 mirroring SB 159, would provide civil and criminal immunity to persons providing goods and services related to in vitro fertilization, except acts of omission that are intentional and not arising from or related to IVF services. But the Senate bill doesn't address when exactly an embryo should be considered an unborn child, which is a major problem and something that needs to be cleared up through the law. And to top that off, both bills would only offer temporary protections for IVF treatments until the elections are over. Mm. HB 237 is retroactive and would automatically repeal on June 1st, 2025, while SB 159 would automatically repeal on April 1st, 2025. Additionally, Alabama's Democratic legislators had already proposed a bill of their own last week which Republicans in the state had largely ignored before putting out proposals of their own, which again would expire after the elections are over. House Democrats introduced House Bill 225 that would declare any fertilized human egg or human embryo that exists outside of a human uterus as not considered an unborn child or human being for any purposes under state law. In other words, the language of the Democratic proposal is clearly stronger in protecting IVF treatments in the state indefinitely, while Republicans want their policy to expire in 2025 after the elections are over. What makes this so sick is how little the lives of Americans matter to the very people who are supposed to be looking out for them and serving them as public servants. They make calculations and policy decisions that have, in some cases, devastating impacts on people's lives solely based on their self interest. They want power, so they'll pull a disgusting stunt that, again, temporarily legalizes IVF just so they can collect enough votes from unwitting Americans who might not know that these protections will, in fact, expire next year. Congress has an insanely low approval rating because None of these people are at all concerned with actually serving the American people. They just seek to serve themselves and they'll stop at nothing to maintain their power. 